Good morning, LCC. This is Lee, the communications director. It is so good to be here with you this morning, and it's been so neat to hear stories about how you all are pursuing Jesus and pursuing others inside and outside of what happens here on a Sunday morning. There are so many stories that we hear that just leave us feeling excited about the different ways that God is moving in and through you all. Today kicks off our spring cleanup week. Our building has been impacting the community and we wanna keep it at a place where it can do that. That means fixing it up and cleaning it up. And we have plenty of opportunities and things to do so you can be part of that. It's also a great group activity. So if you want to come with your group or if you wanna come with a friend or you just wanna come this week, anytime this week, please sign up on mylcc.info. That way we can be here to let you in and help you get started doing something. If you want to just show up this coming Saturday, May 1st, anytime from 9 a.m. to noon, we'll all be here. So just come on by and we'll find something for you to do. It'll be great to see you. And we'll work together to make sure the building of LCC is a place that can continue to impact the community. Thanks so much, Lee. Hey everybody, this is Brett here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about baptisms. Baptism is an amazing way to show your friends, your family, and everyone else at Life Community Church that you have chosen to follow God and that you want everybody to know about it. We have a baptism meeting today after the service in the living room. We also have a baptism meeting next Sunday after the service, and our baptisms will be on May 16th, outside in the parking lot. It's gonna be an awesome morning. Hope to see you there. And if you're interested or you know anyone who is interested in getting baptized, please go online to mylcc.info and sign up there. I want to take a second to talk about what God has been doing in my life recently. I am very thankful for my cell group. I'm thankful for my leader, Clay Davis, and I'm thankful for everybody in it and the ways that they draw me out into discussion, talking about the good, the bad, the ugly, and the ways that I am able to do the same to them. It's been a crazy season of life this past year, and it would have been a lot crazier and a lot more difficult without those people in my life. If you're not part of a cell group, man, I wanna encourage you to check out the group listings on mylcc.info and get involved in one. You won't regret it. Alrighty, well, it's getting closer to the beginning of the service, so find a seat, grab your coffee if you haven't already, and we're looking forward to a great morning with you all.
I was not ready. I do not have my coffee. Darn it. I should have heeded my own instructions. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Life Community Church. My name is Brett Machat. I'm the worship pastor around these parts. Sean, it's good to see you, man. How you Hello. doing? Good. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Man, a round of applause. This, this yeah, is amazing. Uh, Sean, where, where have you been? It's not like anything's happened in your life in the past year. Well, you know, we, we had twins and, you know, oh. lived through a pandemic. You know, the huge. So, oh. nothing major. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a lot. Yeah. How, how's, how's, it been, how's it been having uh, twins in the household? You yeah, know, it's, it's, it's great. You know, they're, they're, we get a lot of sleep. Um, a <laughs> lot of date nights and just, you know, it, it's, no, I mean, they're twins. There's lots of yelling and sometimes they make noise too. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you for filling us all in on what's been going on in your life. It sounds, it sounds busy, but it sounds good. Uh, I want to let you in on some things we've got going around. You might have heard it during the countdown. We have baptisms, woohoo, coming up on May 16th. That's exciting. We should, we should clap for that. Uh, we're going to have an outdoor service out in the parking lot, outdoor baptisms. It's going to be awesome. If you are interested at all, if you've never been baptized, go on milescc.info, sign up for that. Also, we've got a meeting literally right after the service in that room over there. It's called the living room. I will be there. If you are interested, come to the meeting. It'll be quick, probably five, ten minutes. Love to see you there. Also, this week we have our spring cleanup happening. It's actually even getting started today after the service. We've got some volunteers who are going to be cleaning up some of our building. Go online, sign up for a spot throughout the week. There are times, but no matter what, join us on Saturday, this upcoming Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12. We're looking to get a lot of stuff done, and it's going to be a fun time together. So everybody, everybody in the building, Those of you online, we want to see you there. But for now, why don't you guys stand, and we're going to join together and sing a song that talks about unity within the body of Christ, which we know is just so important right now. So I want to encourage you guys to clap your hands, put them together as we sing.
God, that truly is our prayer this morning, that we as a body of believers will be united under your name. Let's sing about that great day that he saved us. And I searched the world But it couldn't fill me And man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough And you came along And put me back together Every desire is now satisfied Hearing your love Sing this out to God this morning Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you, Lord There's nothing, nothing is better than you
praise his name this morning. morning, LCC. Uh, my name is Brett. Welcome to our cell group. We're just having a good time tonight. <laughs> uh, we want to take a second and pray for the service. Uh, let's pray. Uh, God, we're thankful that we can be here together, both in person and online. Um, we pray that you be with us this morning. Open our hearts to whatever you have to say to us. Amen. Amen. Good morning. In spite of what you may see up there, we are glad you're here, okay? But we're starting a series this morning about, about hospitality as 
a virtue of Christian life. And we're calling it the, the, the not welcome mat. Because we want to talk specifically about the ways that we may treat others um, that gives the impression that you're not welcome here, okay? That they're not welcome in our lives. And um, I, I'll start this whole thing by asking, have you been in a situation where you knew you weren't welcome, okay? When I was, um, when I was about 14, 15 years old, I won't get into the details, but I had a fairly significant crush um, on, on a, a particular young lady. And, um, and the common bond that we had, of all things, was our shared love for um, professional wrestling. This is, this is the truth. I'm not, uh, I'm not making this up. Um, we had a shared love of professional wrestling. And, um, and when WrestleMania, like, you know, what is now WWE's WrestleMania, was coming to Tampa... Okay, to the to the Sun Dome, which was right across, like right by where I lived, um, this young lady that I had a crush on said, "I've got an extra ticket to WrestleMania. Why don't you come with us?" And I checked. I, I, I made sure it was all good with mom and dad. I made the trip with them, and um, and it was fantastic. Okay, Hulk Hogan, Macho Man, in a cage steel cage match. It was, it was unreal, okay? There was like a seven-year-old boy that like ripped his shirt off in the aisle next to me, and the experience was everything that you would expect at WrestleMania um, for me. And I was sitting next to this girl. But shortly after, in fact, on the drive home, um, there was, there was I, I, unbeknownst to me, I was in a setting uh, that, that was, that was high, uh, high tension because it turns out that the ticket that I was given was an extra ticket from a guy named Chris, who also went with us, and he and, and turns out that this gal was his guest at WrestleMania, and I was then her guest with the extra ticket at WrestleMania. So Chris, who had invited this young lady to be his guest at WrestleMania, and said, I've got an extra ticket if you want to bring a friend, thinking probably she would choose a female friend, asked me to go. Um, Chris took it upon himself over the next few years to torment me, okay? And on, on many occasions, um, I was not welcome around Chris, and he made it known. He would say terrible things about me. He, he, would, there, he would plan events with everybody in our entire group of friends and specifically not invite me to those things, okay? I, I, all that to say, it's, and, and a little bit, you know, trying to be, be silly about this, but, but there are, we know when we're not welcome somewhere. We know when, when, like, the, the setting that we're in is just not one where our presence is, is welcome. So we're, we're, in the, we're gonna talk through this series um, about these things. And to start, I wanna start with just an important passage of scripture in Leviticus chapter 19. Okay, it's, it's probably, we probably don't read Leviticus enough, quite frankly. But in Leviticus 19, it says, it, uh, this, is, this is in the law, the Levitical law. This is like the Old Testament. Um, it's, it's sort of the details of the law. So you have like in, in Exodus, you have the Ten Commandments, but then you have these details of the law. And it says this in Leviticus 19. It says, you shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance... <clears throat> Sorry, I can't see it there. You shall take vengeance or bear a grudge against your sons of, your, of the sons of your own people. But this says, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Okay? This phrase, love your neighbor as yourself, became shorthand in, in both the Jewish religion and then obviously in the New Testament, Jesus cites this as like, hey, the, all of the law, all of righteousness and morality is summed up in this phrase. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God and love your neighbor. Jesus quotes this. He cites it. But that in Leviticus 19, it's in a bigger context. There's, there's more that's said about this. And, and here's some of the things, and I, we're, we're not going like, to linger here in Leviticus 19, but I want to, 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 to put this in front of us at the outset of this series so that we understand how essential the idea of hospitality was throughout, throughout um, all of the law and then even into what we'll look at in the New Testament. Earlier in Leviticus 19, actually at the very beginning of this passage where it's talking about this, it says, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge. So don't, don't go 100% of the way to the edge of the field. Neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. There's some leftover. Don't gather that up for yourself, it says. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare. Neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. Here's why. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner 
I am the Lord your God, he says. So notice what he says. He says, to, to, like in, in an, a, an ag- agrarian culture, he says, he says, don't go and gather 100% of the, the, your crops. You leave some. You leave some. And he says specifically, you don't leave some for, for any other reason other than what he says here. You leave some because there are people who will need your extra. And you're actually creating margin for those people. You're creating margin for, for, for the poor. You're, but he says you're creating margin for the sojourner, the person who, who isn't really your neighbor, who doesn't live in your town, <clears throat> who's just moving through. Later on, <clears throat> later on in... <clears throat> Later on in Leviticus 19, it actually, he, he says this, and this is, uh, this is kind of another famous uh, passage here, a uh, famous couple of verses in this, where it says, when a stranger sojourns with you in your land. So a stranger, not a native, travels, sojourns through your land. You shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you. You shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, he says. Did you catch this? So what he says is, when, when the, the stranger comes along, this is someone who's, who's not in. If we think about like inside the tent and outside the tent, if you have a tent and someone comes along from outside your tent into your tent, he says, here's how you treat them. You treat them as if they belong in the tent. You treat them as a native, someone who belongs there. The idea of hospitality, the idea of welcoming in, this is not something that's, that's just like an ancillary idea. You see, it's tied to the center of this statement to love your neighbor as yourself. It's tied to, to, the, to the deepest commandment that, that Jesus, when he summed up all the law, and he said, love God and love your neighbor. In very practical ways, he's talking about, he's not talking about always, I mean, it includes obviously people who are just close to you in proximity, close to you physically, close to you geographically, but he's saying, no, it, it, it goes beyond that. And it includes people who quite frankly have no business being around you. It, 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 it includes people who, who you could rightly question, what are you doing here, right? And in this, these next few weeks, we're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about what what we believe to be just a central component of life with Christ in Christian community, and it's this idea of hospitality. So I'm gonna invite Monica Matheny down to to talk with us today about this. We're we're gonna share some thoughts together on this. Monica is our Connections Director at Life Community Church, and many of you know her. Um, She's she's been with us a long time, and we're getting a little too close with our mics. There we go. But I'm gonna invite Monica down to share some thoughts with us. And, and we're just gonna have a dialogue about this. And in a, few, in a few minutes, we're gonna look at a passage of scripture in Matthew, Matthew 25. So if you have a Bible and you wanna turn there, but we'll, we'll talk through that in just a minute. Um, but uh, Monica, thanks for joining us. And, um, and I guess to just start, you're a, our connections director. Tell everybody real quick, I'm, I'm throwing this on you because we okay. did not script this part. Um, I, I didn't know we scripted the rest either. But we, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, the script is strong. Um, but this is, this is off the page. Um, what, what do you do as a connections director? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I just love that God has wired us all differently, and I believe God has given us all gifts. And so a couple of things. I love to connect people around here to say, you've got something to share. And I love to connect people to cell groups. And I love to connect people to one another. So if I can be a vehicle to help those things happen, that's what I like to do. And Monica is well-placed. Those of you who know her, the things she's describing, she did well before she had any title around here. She, she just, she, she exudes hospitality and welcoming. And so I'm, I, we're going to start with this question. This is on the page, okay? <laughs> okay? Um, but what is it? What is hospitality as you understand it? Yeah, so I'm going to give you like a definition, and then I'm going to give you an image of what it is to me. Um, so if I'm going to be nerdy, like uh, the Latin word for that hospitality comes from, I never took Latin, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's H-O-S-P-E-S, I'm going to say hospice. And it means both the visitor and the stranger. So if you think of the word hospital, you might think, oh, that's where strangers come to be cared for. Or if you think of the word hospice, you might think that's a place that people come for a place of rest. Um, But in the New Testament, the Greek for hospitality just literally translated means it's the love of strangers. So 
You know, that's the definition. But when I think of it, what does hospitality mean in a biblical context? Um, Tom did a great job of talking about Leviticus. We don't read it very much. But I think of God and like, well, let me backtrack. I think most people, when they hear the word hospitality, they think inviting someone over to dinner, right? Or someone who's a host. You make dinner, you prepare a meal, you clean the house, you get ready, okay? We're gonna talk today a little bit about, I hope we can broaden our view of hospitality. For the sake of hospitality, let's say we use that definition, right? What if we imagine God is the host and he has created this great feast and he is inviting everyone to the table? And in Leviticus, he's showing us through the nation of Israel, I am the host and I'm inviting you to be a part of my kingdom and this nation. And then he tells the Israelites, now you go be hosts. You go be a host and you leave margin in the land to care for the poor. You love your neighbor. Um, you love the stranger. And I think we're gonna see in the New Testament, Jesus goes, hey guys, now you get to be the host. And so to me, I go, it is just living out what God has modeled for us. Awesome. So why? So we've talked about it's in the Bible. Why, is it, why does it matter so much? Well, I guess as a believer, I go, um, it matters that I want to be like God. I want to grow and, and be like Jesus. And so if God is the ultimate host welcoming us into his kingdom and modeling for us, then it matters because that's part of maturing as a believer. Yeah, and uh, Henry Nowen said it well. He, he gave us this, this sort of uh, thank God for those who are better with words than just the average folks like us. But Henry Nowen put it well. When, when he said this, he said that, that hospitality means primarily the creation of free space where the stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality is not itself to change people, but to offer them a space where change can take place. It's not to bring men and women over to our side, but to offer freedom not disturbed by dividing lines. One of the reasons that we're, we're focusing on hospitality is that we have just had plenty of occasion to be divided, okay? We've had plenty of occasion to draw lines. We've had, we've had ample opportunity to take sides. And what hospitality does is it says, like, we're, we're sort of tearing down fences, we're, we're erasing some borders and lines, and we're saying that those things are not what defines us. They're not the things that are gonna keep us apart. In spite of what, what reasons we may have to be divided, we're going to live as if we're, we're together on this. And so we're, we want to, to look at this, this passage of scripture in, in, in the New Testament as we, as we focus here on some of the teaching of Jesus. So if you have your Bible and you're in Matthew 25, you're gonna see a couple um, there's, really, there's really sort of three stories in, in Matthew 25. Um, and we're going to look at the last one. And I'm going to warn you up front, it's a difficult passage. Um, it, it is a, it's a challenging passage. It's a passage that, <clears throat> that has some very, very hard teaching. Um, but just prior to the passage we're going to look at in Matthew 25, um, there's these two stories. One is a story of, of a wedding um, and, and the, the, the virgins that come to serve at the wedding, and, and they're waiting for the, the groom to arrive. Um, and another one about, about some gifts, some talents that are given to, to some service. So Monica, why don't you sum up what you see in those stories, because that's going to yeah. provide important context for yeah. what we look at. So the parable of the ten virgins, it's, um, it kind of came to life for me. I think sometimes, you know, we talk about um, we read scripture through a lens, oftentimes Western lens or what we were raised with. And um, my husband and I had the opportunity to go to a wedding in India when our daughter was one. And um, the invitation said the wedding started at seven. Um, side note, we were coming off a of rotavirus, so we felt really sick. And we had l not a lot of energy. And we're waiting, waiting, waiting for the wedding to start and come to realize um, that the groom doesn't really show up till he wants to show up. And so you wait. And the groom did not show up till about 10 or 10.30 at night. And as we're waiting, and we're hungry, and we're like, is he ever gonna show up? Um, people down the street start shouting, he's coming. The 
groom is coming, and there's like this excitement of he's finally arrived. And so in this passage, there is this idea as people are waiting for the groom to come, they get really tired, and they're longing for him to come. And, and some people are ready. You know, there's five people who are ready, and their, their lights are ready, and the other people aren't ready. Um, and then... Uh, do you tell me to summarize sure. the second one too? Oh, yeah, the second story. story. It's really and the second story is also a story of there's a master. Um, these are both parables, and so I think it's fair to say, yeah, master's probably Jesus. And um, there's this representation of somebody who's given five talents, um, which is money, but you can take talents maybe to mean a lot of different things if you were going to draw an illustration. And the person who has five um, is really faithful with it and... and uses it well and invests it. The person who has, I think, two um, is also very faithful. There's a person who has one who knows some things about the master and has decided, I'm not going to invest this. I am just going to hide it away. When the master comes, he is pleased with the first two, and with the third one, um, it does not end well. And so I look at these stories, and I kind of go, I've got two summaries. One, be ready when the master comes. Right? So there's a, an element of salvation here that I just want to say, gosh, we have this opportunity to know Christ and to receive him and to trust him as our Savior. First and foremost, um, I hope people read these parables and, and hear that call of a loving God to want to be in relationship with us. But there's also, I think, for those of us who know him, there's this idea of what are we doing with our time while we wait for the master to come? And then it's going to lead into this passage that I think yeah. said is a hard passage. Yeah. This, so, so essentially, like, be ready. Be ready. Be aware of what God has given us in that readiness for what we're about to read. Right? So I'm going to read through this passage beginning in verse 31 of Matthew 25. And it'll be on the screen, but feel free to read up there in, in, in your, uh, your Bible. But it says in, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we, when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they, will, then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. It's a hard passage, right? It's a hard passage because it deals in either ors. It deals in either ors. There's, there's sheep or goats. It's not sort of like sheep or goats, but there also might be some bunnies in the field or some, some other options. And, and the implications for being sheep or being goat is, is it, it, it's eternal, it's, it's final. And so when we read it, it's difficult to read. It's difficult to, to take that into its, in, into its context and say, that, that like, this is, it's not, it's not, it's just not fun. It's not, it's not just warm and fuzzy. And this is one of the last teachings recorded in the Gospel of Matthew prior to Christ. Um, arrest and crucifixion and then the ultimate resurrection. It's one of the last things that, he, that he, he, he taught here. And so as we look at it, we get this passage that, that presents some really challenging things to us. And if we read it, it ought to trigger certain questions for us. 
And one of those questions is like, okay, sheep and goats, like what, what, what is the distinction between them? It's very clear in this passage what they do and don't do, but what really distinguishes them from one another? And so I want to, as, as we begin to talk about this, Monica, as you look at this, what's the distinguishing thing between the sheep and the goats? Well, that's a great question. I think, you know, again, we, we're coming off of these two stories where there's clear-cut things. Either people are ready or they're not. Um, and I can't help but think about we just came off the series of John, and we have this beautiful teaching where Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, and the sheep hear my voice, and they know me. So as I, I put those things together, I can't help but go, gosh, these sheep just to be, seem to be people who know their Savior. They are followers of Christ, and they are marked with the Holy Spirit, and um, they are not marked with the Holy Spirit because of the things they've done, but they are marked with the Holy Spirit of, because of who they know to be their good shepherd. I mean, this is really well said, right? Like, one of the things here is that in the midst of doing the things in Matthew 25, it's not like the sheep said, I'm doing these things so that someday I will get this reward. It, it, and it, you almost get the impression that the goats, reading a little bit between the lines, are like, wait a minute, I didn't know that these items were on the list of things I needed to do in order to get in. And it, it actually right there sort of gives us a dividing line. You said it well, that the sheep are people who belong to the good shepherd. They, before they were doing these things, they, they knew his voice, they followed him, they were with him. So we wanna be very careful with this passage when we begin it with it to say, this is not a, a handbook or a, a bulleted list of things one ought to do in order to get into heaven, okay? Um, that's not the point. The point is, these are things that, that we see in those who are, are in step with who Christ is with their shepherd, that they are living out the, the, the salvation that they possess. And so I think that's a really critical distinction for us to make as we begin. But also buried right in the center of this, okay? We can, we can say at this point that, that it does tell us though, these are things that matter a great deal to the shepherd, okay? Okay? This is, this is the sheep who hear his voice. They do these things. They live this way, right? It's indications of sort of being in the right pasture with him. And, and right smack dab in the middle of it, there's all these things. There's, there's um, I, was, I was hungry and you fed me and thirsty and you gave me a drink. And then right in the middle of it, it says, I was a stranger and you welcomed me. And we find that hospitality is right back at the center of a conversation of what matters to our Savior. And it, it's right smack dab in the, conver in the middle of the conversation about what it is that he's making us into as sheep in his flock, is those who welcome the stranger. So I want to ask, Monica, as we look at this, who, who are today's strangers? Who, who are the hungry and the thirsty and the prisoners and the naked? What are we talking about here? Mm. You know, I could probably spend like another hour talking about this list. No one will mind. Go for it. Yeah, but I, I say, you know, if I'm <laughs> going to go through this, I mean, I, um, if you know me, you know I think both locally and globally. Um, I'm always thinking that filter. So if I really quickly were to go through this list and you ask me who is hungry, I go, I love that we support um, Honduras as a church, there are people who are hungry in our world. They are literally starving to death. And, you know, as a, as a body of Christ, we are called to feed the hungry. But I also go, we partner with the Hilliard Food Pantry, which is right next door. And um, suburban poverty and food insecurity are real. I am so grateful. For those of you who don't have school-age children, um, our schools have provided breakfasts and lunches for every kid in the districts all year because of the pandemic. I go, but I know summer is coming, and they will not be getting breakfast and lunch. They will be thinking about dinner and dinner on the weekends and breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. So I go, uh, that is coming. So we have hungry in our community. Um, my sweet family sitting in front of me had, um, a, 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 probably about four years ago this week, um, opened my eyes to there are a lot of people in our world who are thirsty. There are people who do not have access to clean water, and that is even in our nation. So I go, these are real things. Um, there are vulnerable, 
We have a lot of people in prison. And you know, so if I take this passage literally, oh my goodness. And if I take it figuratively, oh goodness. I mean, so many people who are imprisoned in thought patterns, in, in relationships. I mean, I look around and I go, we are living in a time where people are hurting. So yes, I can look at this passage and go quite literally like so much. But the stranger that you bring up, Tom, um, I, I have always identified with the stranger. So uh, my parents were um, immigrants. And I'm just going to briefly tell you a quick story of um, my family and what I have seen over the years. Uh, my parents, um, my dad had um, a job offer, and they came from India. And um, through a series of oopses, um, his job offer was supposed to be in Akron with a company called uh, Firestone. And they accidentally um, processed the wrong visa for him. So my parents were stuck in Canada for a couple years. Um, my mother was pregnant with my sister, and thankfully, um, with their medical system, they were able to have formula and you know, a delivery. My parents never talked about the hardship of this year. So it wasn't until my dad passed that I really understood. But their stories were neighbors who literally said, come use our refrigerator. Let me show you how a stove works. Let me take you to the grocery store. And I think what I remember is when my sister, two years later, side note, Firestone got the right visa, brought my dad to this country, very graciously said, we are sorry we messed that up and had a job waiting for him. <laughs> so, but when my sister got married, my parents invited all these people from Canada that I had never met. I remember being like 16 and I said, who are these people? And my mom would say, she let me use her fridge. They let us, they showed us, you know, how to work a stove. We didn't have a stove on our side of the apartment. So it's those kind of stories. And I, these people came to the wedding, to this feast, that now my dad is the one showing hospitality. He's returning the favor. And it's such an image to me of it doesn't take much to recognize who is the stranger, right? Greg and Bren last week, um, if you haven't had a chance to listen to last week's message, great, great pictures of what it looks like to be a faithful member of the body. And um, I know Greg and Brent are like, probably like, why are you bringing us up? But you know, something that struck me as I was talking to them a few weeks ago is I asked Greg and Brent, what's it like to leave your neighborhood you've been in for all these years? Which they had shared some stories. And you know, Greg did not even skip a beat. He was, I'm so excited for our new neighborhood we're moving into and already talking about the people he's going to be investing in. But he's the new guy. But he's thinking about who, who are going to be our new strangers. And so I go, strangers all among us. Um, it's your neighbor. It's your new coworker. It's, it's someone you don't know. I mean, it's pretty basic. Yeah. There's so many strangers. So, yeah. yeah. And, and even in the passage, one of the things that's interesting to me, in, in, as you, you share those stories, is that um, like the way that the sheep are sort of oblivious to who these people were. It wasn't, again, it wasn't like they sat out with a list and said, I'm, I've got, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. It's as if their, their hospitality and kindness to these people was just second nature. And, and as you share those stories, it sounds like the same thing, right? Like it just, this just sort of flowed out of the nature of the people in your parents' life and, and then the, the returning of that hospitality flowed out of the excitement and joy that your family had to, to share that with others. And, and I, th I think that when we, think, when we look at hospitality, one of the things that's fascinating about it, and in this passage, that when, when, when the, the Lord responds and says, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me, is there's a connection between my neighbor and God himself. Because it's my neighbor who bears God's image in my life. The stuff I can accumulate, like if we go back to the Old Testament in the field, the, the field reflects God's glory. The, the, the beauty of the world reflects God's glory, but it does not contain his image. It's my neighbor who bears God's image. And so our, our kindness there is, is our, 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 our feeding that person, clothing that person. That is, that is actually the way that, like God does not, God himself does not need our clothes. 
He does not need our food. Our neighbor does. And by offering it to them, we are offering it to him because they bear his image. Is that, is that a, can we connect with that? Our welcoming to the stranger is welcoming God because with that stranger comes God's image. It, they bear it. It's him with them. And so that's why, like, this idea of, of, you know, when did I do this? Well, no, when you did it to the stranger, when you did it to the least of these. It's such a powerful idea that I know your family has experienced, and now we, we say, like, this is, this is a component. It's a central component of walking with Christ. Tom, but, to, yeah. just to throw in there, a lot of people can be kind, but I look back, I could, I could tell you so many stories of people who showed kindness for family, but when I look back, I now see, you know what, I think that person was a believer, and I'll have a memory or something. Um, so I go, to do those things because of our walk with Christ, I go, people are watching. People have no, you may have no idea, I mean, I think I get the idea in this passage that some people are like, I don't remember doing that. You know, I bet you there's so many people on here who have stories of you were so greatly impacted. Maybe someone was a witness to you, and you went back to that person now and say, remember that time where you did that really kind thing? And they might go, I, I have no remember that, memory of that, but I'm so glad it impacted you. Um, so yeah, not to underestimate when we do it out of the, the natural flow of, of who we are because of Christ, it, it has a different impact. Yeah. And, and <laughs> sorry. And, um, and so I, I, just a couple things that because we're talking about hospitality, this is clearly like a gender issue, right? <laughs> like it's clear that, that one gender is supposed to be hospitable and others are not, right? Like that's, that's what the Bible's telling us. Yeah, so I banned HGTV like <laughs> 10 years ago. So I do think um, when we hear hospitality, there are these images we have, right? And I would say um, I'm not, if you come to my house, I don't have like a great theme. I'm a terrible meal planner. And sometimes I hear people say things around here like, I don't have the gift of hospitality. I'm not very good at, you know, hosting people. And I go... For those of you who I've been in your home and you have that gift, thank you so much. I absolutely love that you have a wonderful theme and a welcoming home. But for those of you whose homes I've been in and you've invited me into the chaos of your lives and you've come into my home when I had to choose between either I'm going to feed you or I'm going to wash the dishes and I said, oh, I guess I'll feed them and you're going to come into my house with the chaos, I hope that that felt just as much hospitality to you as the other scenario because I know when... I've been in either of those scenarios, that's hospitality. But I also will say, it does not stop with that kind of stuff, okay? So um, nowhere in the Bible does it say this is about creating the perfect meal. I go, you know, I, it's about, um, does your coworker feel comfortable to come into your cube, this is pre-pandemic, and say, I, I just wanna like process this. Does your neighbor feel like they can come into your backyard? It's, it's back to that now in quote, or that now, now in quote of whatever space you're taking up, <laughs> can someone feel free to come into that space and share that with you and feel like they can be themselves and they're accepted? That is not a gender issue, just <laughs> not. Um, so yes, please, if you have these images of hospitality that are you know, Chip and Joanna, those are lovely things, but that is not what we're talking about. So, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, um, I'm talking about. <laughs> but, but, but you're right. Like, it's very easy for us to make excuses for our own behaviors. It's easy for me, okay, that I don't do this thing because I'm, I'm not, someone else is better at it. Um, I, I don't have a natural bent towards it. Like, whatever excuse I can come up with to, to not invite people into my space. And I am someone who loves my space. I really do. I, I don't want others in my space. I don't like them in my business. I want my own space. And yet, central to this 
message in the, in, in the gospel. It's fr- from, from the beginning when God's laying out his law for his people and through the, the last, some of the last teaching of Jesus, he's putting the stranger and welcoming the stranger at the center of this. And so we, we, we have to, by faith, and, and ask the spirit to help us, to show us what does it look like for me to leave some margin in my field? What does it look like for me to not strip my vineyard bare so that I've got some room, some space for the stranger, the, the wanderer, the, the sojourner to, to engage in my world? And so in our last few minutes, I wanna just ask this question of you, Monica, and this is where you are, you're so gifted, um, is, is help us understand what are some practical things that we could be doing as we're, as we're praying that this becomes more and more natural. Like, the, 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 um, you know, um, the natural thing is something that probably started as a habit for most of us. Mm-hmm. So, so how do we begin moving towards this? And we're gonna spend more time on this in this series and, and giving some more examples, but for, for right now, when we, when, we, when we step out of here, what are some ways that we could say, okay, I want to, by faith, begin to practice some hospitality? Yeah. How would you help us with that? Okay, so I'm going to say something that's going to sound really Christianese, but I, am, I, I wholeheartedly agree with this. Start with prayer. Um, more true than any time, I think, in, in anything I've ever seen, is we are coming out of a season where many people who actually were comfortable sharing spaces and lives with people literally have not been sharing space with people. So I've talked to many of us in our body who said, I'm a little nervous coming out of the pandemic. I haven't been in a room with more than 10 people in over 13 months. So I said, recognize that we are feeling a little safe in our spaces. Um, And so I would say, pray, God, where do you want me to start engaging? And where where does that start? I would say... um, where are your personal passions? As we look at this list, um, you know, maybe you are drawn to like a specific thing and you go, how can I get involved somewhere? And I go, and those are great things. There's many ministries in all these areas. But I keep coming back to, um, these don't have to be big things. Yes, you can join a Christian ministry or ask around here. I'm happy to help connect people if I know of things going on. But it really does start with, who are my neighbors? Who can I just have conversations with and invite into my space? And I, that can be, again, um, your coworker. Yes, even on Zoom. I mean, I can tell you amazing stories of people connecting. Um, and, and just to, to change the, men, the mindset of my life is for me to get up and go through my day and at the end of the day, maybe watch a little TV and enjoy a little life and start over again to, to change and go, God, where could you invite me to say, how can I share some of this space with someone? And flip side, not just invite people into that space. I could spend a lot of time on this too, but are you open to someone sharing hospitality with you? Are you willing to receive that? Because that takes just as much humility and grace when someone you're not comfortable with invites you into their space? And are you willing to go to that space and, um, and share with people? And, and I think that's, that's huge too. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, just to reiterate, you already said, like, begin with, like, this thought, this prayer, like, Lord, help me not to make my life about me. And, and that, is, that is the challenge for us, isn't it? Like, at the root of nearly... <laughs> All of our struggles is this, this selfishness, this, this self-absorption. And, and, I, and in our struggles with hospitality, there's no doubt that it, it, I want what I want. I want to do what I want to do. And, and everything else is just intruding. So I'm going to call the, the band back down. We're going to close up this morning. But, but thank you, Monica, and... and, and uh, for, for sharing with us. And, and thank you, everyone, for, for being willing with us. Um, and, and so as we, as we sing one more time this morning, would you make it your prayer to, to begin to say that, 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 that very thing that Monica just said, Lord, help me not to make my life about me. Help me not to make my, even 
in our local church, help me not to make my presence in our body about me. Help, help it to be about others. Help me, help me to create spaces that, that others know they are welcome there. So uh, let me pray for us. And, and Monica, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us on this. Lord, we, um, we thank you. We thank you for welcoming us. Um, and and if, if we can think rightly about the, the gap between your holiness and our sin and, and how, how unwelcome we should be, um, it's just... Um, it's just, God, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that you, you've seen fit to include us. And God, forgive us for the ways that we, we draw lines and barriers and, and keep up, try to keep other people out for whatever reason. I, I, God, I know that it's largely unconscious, but, but help us. Help us to see. Help us to see those around us through, through your grace. Um, God, would you, would you help us to be alerted to, to those around us who would, who would be strangers, those around us who, who we would just pass by without second thought? Um, would, you, um, would you help us? Would you prompt us? Um, again, we thank you for your work in our lives. We know that, um, that you, are about, um, you are about your people and, and, and you, you love and you care for us and you Give us grace in the same way that you're asking us to give that to those around us. So, Lord, we thank you, and um, we, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. I want to invite you guys to stand as we're going to sing one more song today. Who am I that the highest would welcome me. And I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Last he has ransomed me, his grace runs deep. And while I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Oh yes, he died for me, who the sun sets free. Oh, he's
thank you that that is true. Help us just to hold tight to those words and remember that you have chosen us, that you love us, that we are yours. I pray that you would let those words sink into us this week, that we would find comfort in them. I pray that we would take what Tom and Monica have brought, Lord, and that you would just lay on our hearts, people, that we can just draw in, um, draw into you, draw into community. I pray that you would just be with us this week, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's been awesome. Thank you again, Tom and Monica, for sharing. Um, and yeah, yeah, I feel like we have a goal this week. Uh, and before we go and be hospitable to the people around us all over, um, just want to tell you again about the baptism meeting that we're having after the service in a couple of minutes. Let's say it's 11.03. Let's say at 11.10 in that room, we're going to have a baptism service. Or not, no, not service, meeting. That is the 16th, sorry. Um, and I don't know, for some reason, I feel, like, I feel like I'm forgetting one other announcement, but I can't remember what it is. That's right. We have the spring cleanup starting this week. So go online, sign up. We will see you for sure, of course, this Saturday. Oh my gosh. <laughs> At 9 a.m., we will see you there. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Oh my goodness, it just keeps getting higher. It keeps, keeps changing keys. That's amazing. All right, you are dismissed. We'll see ya. Oh my gosh. <laughs>